All right, so uh, with Ty and Secchi, looks like he just had a, an ankle sprain. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we'll continue to monitor that throughout the course of the week, but there's a possibility that he would be available for the game. Um, Ashawn Robinson, we're still looking at, um, you know, his knee, but it, it doesn't look good. Um, I'll have further information for you guys. And then as far as Matthew, he is still uh, being evaluated for the concussion protocol. Yesterday, when we went into the tent, um, you know, got his symptoms. He checked out feeling pretty good, but we wanted to be over precautious. But where he's at right now, as it relates to his status, still an evaluation to see if we are going to put him in the protocol. And, and that's where I'll kind of leave that as uh, as it relates to Matthew, because there's really nothing more that I can say on that front. Dennis. I think you're muted. Dennis. Oh, all right. How are you doing, Coach McVeigh? Good. Um, what kind of element does Bryce bring to the run game? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, an additional guy that can threaten you with his legs. He can create off schedule. I thought he did some positive things yesterday. And um, you can see he's just got a great, um, you know, play energy about himself and teammates rally around him. And I thought he did a nice job with uh, with the opportunities he had. And you guys rushed for 148 yards. This type of production that you've been looking for from the run game? Yeah, I think so. You know, I thought, you know, Cam had some good yards. I, I thought, uh, you know, it was good to be able to get Kyron Williams going as well. And then, you know, even on a couple of the, you know, Matthew had a scramble earlier in the game that got us to a fourth down decision. So I thought there was a lot of positive things. I thought our line did a good job for the most part with our combinations and uh, things of that nature. But when you have a quarterback that can um, add that element, that certainly does uh, alleviate some pressure and stress. And um, I thought, uh, you know, that was a positive for us yesterday. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Nick. Hey, Coach. Uh, sp speaking about the running game, uh, is there any plans in particular as far as getting Daryl Henderson more involved uh, moving forward, especially when you guys haven't really had a uh, a rusher that rushed over 65-plus yards this season? 65 is a good number since Cam went for 61, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so with Daryl, um, you know, he felt his knee in pregame a little bit. You know, he obviously started and had those first couple carries of the game. Um, but it was more about, you know, just he felt a little something in his knee. And and that was kind of what led to, you know, Cam and Kyron getting the majority of the work. But um, he said he felt fine today. And so that was kind of uh, why he didn't maybe get as many opportunities as just in pregame when he was going through the warmups, felt a little something, wanted to start the game out. And then, uh, you know, uh, Rashad and Thomas felt like, uh, you know, just having Cam and, and Kyron get the majority of the workload was uh, was going to be the right thing. And and I uh, I agreed with them based on what Daryl had been feeling. And obviously, it's never a good thing to not have Cooper Cup available, but be able to spread the ball around even more, with, whether it's been Skoranek having Van Jefferson out there and, and other, you know, pieces to that, that particular wide receiver core. Um, how much does that help as far as being able to be more um, – diverse when it comes to being able to spread the ball out and getting those yards. Yeah, I thought it was good to get guys opportunities. I thought it was great for Tutu to be able to make the play that he made. You know, you get Brandon Powell there. You get, you know, like you mentioned with Ben, I thought Allen made the plays. And then it was good to be able to get Van going as well, um, particularly, you know, with a couple catches he made in that two-minute drive at the end of the first half. And then Allen obviously closing it out with a touchdown. But, no, that, that, that was a positive. There were some positive steps that, that you could take away um, in spite of, uh, you know, the result yesterday. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Gary? Gary, you're on mute. Of course, it wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a season without that. Um, John, with, with Matthew still being evaluated, um, I mean, how optimistic are you with just the second time in three weeks that, that he's going to be available this week. Yeah, I, I think you you want to be really careful with that. Um, like I said, what what I want to be able to do, Gary, is is wait until I get all the necessary information. But my tone and and uh, and tune hasn't changed in the least bit. That it's going to be about the person, um, you know, first and foremost. And so, if there are things from this, then obviously, um, you know, we're going to be you know totally in alignment with all those things uh, as far as the medical advice and. Matthew and Kelly and all that kind of stuff. So um, you can't be too careful with this stuff. So we'll wait and see exactly what the uh, actual diagnosis is. And then uh, I'll be able to have further updates for you then. Is it something that, uh, and I, again, I know you probably haven't mapped it out that 
long, but is it something where he might go on, if he, if he does have to go back into the protocol, is that something that you would consider putting him on IR or possibly shutting him down for the season? Yeah, I think you have to make, you know, those decisions once I get that information, but I'm not going to be reckless and we're going to be really smart with Matthew and, um, you know, that's kind of where I'll leave that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Jordan. Hey, Sean, what is the necessary information that you're you're waiting on that you mentioned you guys are still waiting on? Uh, if if he's actually needs to be in the protocol because he has a concussion and then the necessary information from the doctors that I would get after that. OK, and that's something that <clears throat> excuse me, that's that's something that you are uh, saying you you'd like to be briefed on this time. I know you mentioned last uh, the last time this happened, um, you weren't necessarily. Uh, you hadn't necessarily been informed whether he had one or not. It was semant it was semantical things in regards to when you put somebody in the pr protocol, then you're saying that they have a concussion. And so, you know, how they go through all those different steps because of some of the information that out of privacy, you know, for just the, you know, the, the overall, whether it's HIPAA or medical things, you know, that that's kind of just where kind of want to just give that, that information and, um, and that was kind of when I had answered that question to you prior, um, it was semantical and I was giving you everything that I had known up to that point. And I've continued to be a little bit more educated on the entirety of this process, uh, as it relates to Matthew and just the big picture in general. Yeah. And to that point, Sean, um, are there any other, um, circumstances? I know you guys know, and have been, um, doing work on the nature of, uh, what this type of injury and what um, symptomatic things could be and, and the player safety and all of that. Um, but are there other extenuating circumstances that are also involved? You mentioned having conversations with, um, with him and, and sort of his input on, and, and, and in terms of, you know, where your team is at right now as well. Yeah, of course, you know, there's, there's a lot of layers to it. Um, you know, the first thing is, is the, is the medical thing, because if there's not the clearance and, and the thumbs up on that, then there's really no further conversations to be had. And then the next part, if that does exist, then you discuss the circumstances, um, you know, family members, different things like that, that is, uh, is an extremely important part that you never make decisions without everybody feeling totally good about the, you know, the health and safety of the human being before the football player. And so um, the answer is yes, but, you know, there's no conversations to be had unless you're getting that medical clearance and then those follow that up. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. Claudia. Hi, Sean. Um, I know you're always very um, positive about every week. And I was just wondering how difficult has been to pick up the pieces, you know, these past weeks. And how did you guys are resetting, working on resetting every time? Yeah, it's it's been challenging. You know, there there's a lot of different things that we've worked through as it relates to the injuries, the moving parts and some of those types of things. And so, you know, you, you just have to be able to say, all right, who's up next? What does that look like? And then, you know, you start your preparation for the upcoming opponent, but uh, without a doubt, you know, um, you try to remain, you know, positive, you know, within the framework of the things that you can control and, and shift your energy and focus towards those things. And that will continue to remain consistent for me and, and for our coaches. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Maria. Hey, Sean, I was wondering um, if Matthew can't go and you have Bryce, what is John's availability or what happens if John still has an issue? Who backs up Bryce? Yeah, those would be things that, uh, you know, I think we'd be in the process, Maria, if, that, if it got to that, you know, where you're looking at other avenues of onboarding some players um, from that quarterback position, whether or not that means that they would be up and active um, against the Chiefs, depending upon if you go with two or you know, Matthew's availability is, is something that, you know, really, you know, Les and I were, were discussing as, um, you know, potential contingency plans. And so I'd probably be better equipped to answer that once I get a little bit more information on Matthew. And, um, but, but those are things that we're kind of working on in the background, if that opportunity, um, you know, comes about. How is John? He's doing okay. You know, he's, 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 he'd be limited, you know, he still is having some soreness in his neck. And so, what that means in terms of his ability to be able to play the position and do all the things that he's capable of will be something that we'll evaluate over these next couple of days. And so, um, but he's, he's trending in the right direction, but the, but the neck thing is real. Thank you. You're welcome. Gary. 
Um, hey, Sean, you, we've asked you this just kind of in general about everything that's going on, but specifically to, to lose uh, Cooper Cup, you know, one week and then Matthew Stafford the next. Um, that kind of one-two punch. What's what's that like for a coach? A one-two punch. That's what it's like, you know, right in the gut. Now it's it's tough. I mean, it, those guys are really you know the foundational parts of of how you kind of have it built. And so, you know, you continue to learn about the things that that we've kind of done over the last handful of years. And these guys are competing to the best of their ability. And then sometimes a, a part of this game is out of your control, where where injuries do occur. And that's the sickest part about it because of the amount of work that goes in for these guys and how much they want to continue to be out there with their teammates. But um, that's a part of it and uh, challenging. Yes. But, you know, what can you do about it other than continue to move forward similar to what Claudia's question was and you want to be there and support those guys. And then when, you know, when they're able to be around their support for their teammates and kind of being an extension of the coaching staff, as you will, is, is very valuable. But when those guys aren't out on the field, um, you're never replacing two players like that. And then I, I don't know if you guys were in the air or, you know, if you were able to see the end of the, uh, Chargers Chiefs game but I was curious if you saw that um, you know what you thought of Patrick Mahomes and what that kind of challenge that's going to be for you guys given the state of your roster and just kind of uh, your one loss record going in going into that game at Kansas City. Sure yeah it's a challenge no matter what type of situation or scenario that, that we've been in over the last handful of years because of the caliber of the team um, you know, they're really, they're a great football team. I, I did see the end of that game. I thought that was two really uh, excellent teams going at it, but for them to be able to go down, you know, with the Chargers taking the lead and then for Mahomes to go right down the field and uh, in the fashion that they did was, was incredibly impressive. And then for their defense to be able to close it out with a turnover uh, speaks volumes to the complete team that they have. And, um, you know, Mahomes, Kelsey, really them offensively, they are, uh, they are unbelievable. Coach Reed and the enemy do an excellent job and they're as good as it gets. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll wrap up with you, Jordan. Sean, a little bit more big picture, um, just on the on the defense in general. Um, overall this year, I know, you know, minus maybe a couple of outliers. Overall this year, um, the group's been stopping the run really well. And um, as you've talked about a lot, Raheem's talked about a lot, capping the explosives has always been a factor. Um, again, minus some outliers in recent weeks. It seems like teams are realizing that they can basically go with one method of trying to beat you guys to, you know, neutralize the pass rush and take advantage of the, the, the quick game and things like that. What are those conversations like when you guys talk about adjusting and, and realizing, you know, people are taking a leaf out of a very, I think, familiar blueprint and in, in some of those San Francisco concepts that they, they initially used against you guys? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. You know, I think we have, uh, you know, shut out the run really well. I think in a lot of instances, you know, talk, talking about the ball coming out quickly, you know, there's some instances where we want to have less air in the coverages and, and, and sometimes even yesterday, some of the quick element throws that they were able to activate was a miscommunication on a tool that we have, or, um, you know, even, you know, one of the explosives that they ended up hitting down the field, we got a free player coming off the left side, Aaron wins quickly and, and it leads to an explosive touchdown. So, um, the, 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 the question is great because, you know, those are things that we want to try to be able to problem solve. And, and how do you continue to do that um, while maintaining some of the strengths that you do have? And, and, um, and that's absolutely something that we are mindful of and we are trying to figure out. And there has been, you know, some elements of no different than offensively, maybe not quite to the extent of the amount of moving parts, but there's some different guys that you're working the continuity and the, communication as it relates to some of the different personnels that we activate and then how we see things through the same lens on the second and third level. And when you're playing pass defense and especially with the tools that we can activate coverage wise, you got to be able to see things as one. And, um, and that's where we got to look at ourselves and, and continue to try to make sure that there's that clarity for those guys to be able to do it. And then when those opportunities um, are presented to be able to go do it. And, and then if they're not getting done, then we've got to ask ourselves is our process is our rhythm throughout the course of the week in alignment with them being able to do that and, and how do we have that shared accountability where we're connected and, and ultimately having better results. That kind of goes back to what I asked you about uh, yesterday about the complimentary football and that being symptomatic of that cohesiveness in terms of the interest staff communication. Um, where have you guys troubleshot that and, and how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think so much of it too is like good complimentary football is when you create your own energy by good football. Um, you know, 
I don't think there's ever a time when you say you got a 14, 10 lead, we're coming out of the half and it's like, all right, we're going to try to be able to stop them. It's not necessarily anything that would be different, you know, where you're trying to play good football, snap in and snap out and how you pick one another up or how you capitalize on that momentum. And I would say the biggest thing, Jordan, is we haven't created enough momentum type of plays to play off of one another, you know, and then when it's not great, uh, you know, it's, it's been a challenge, but you create your own momentum. You play good complementary football by making explosives, by scoring points, by creating turnovers. And that just hasn't been consistent enough for when we've done that in the five years prior to, and, and that's, um, you know, there's a lot of layers to that, but I do think it's as simple as, you know, the goal, even if you're up 10 points or if, you know, you had just given up a short field, Hey, let's go stop them on a sudden change, or let's not let them take back the lead. If we go up or, Hey, if, uh, if we get, you know, a short field, let's turn it into a touchdown. And so a lot of that is more about those different phases executing and taking advantage of, some of the momentum that we're trying to be able to create. And, and we just haven't created enough of it um, for that to come to life. And um, in a lot of instances, good complimentary football is really good football combined as one offense, defense, and special teams.